What's up, YouTube? Boom! What happened? It's all taken apart. Yeah. You saw me taking the engine and stuff out. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the, we're gonna pull the engine apart and take a look at the cylinder and stuff. We'll run you through it it's super quick. I can't think about an easier bike to take the top end off of than one of these KTM's. We're hoping, we're hoping that the cylinder's in good condition. We're hoping that the piston looks good. We're hoping to find not a clapped out top end in this thing. Uh, so that's best case. Worst case, gotta get the jug honed out. We gotta deal with the machinist, blah, blah, blah. We don't wanna do that. Keep your fingers crossed. Pray to your deity of choice. If you have one, if not, that's cool too. Just, uh, just send good vibes to this engine. Let it not be clapped out. Let it be good. Uh, anyway, let's get to it. Hey guys, we got the engine out as you can see. So we're gonna pull this jug off, this part right here. We're gonna take a look at the piston um, we're gonna, and ring. We're gonna take a look at the cylinder, uh, make sure there's no gouging or scratches or things that we might have to take care of. Really, when we pull this off, what we wanna see, perfect case, is a very nice looking piston without a bunch of scoring, scratches, gouges, big chunks taken out of it. Yada, yada, yada. We want to see a nice piston and maybe some rings that need to be replaced. That'd be best case. Uh, but since I don't know anything about this bike, obviously I'm not the other, you know, the original owner. We don't know when the last time the piston was replaced in it. What we'll probably do is do a ring and piston just to be safe. So when we sell it, we could say, hey, this has been done and it's documented. Here you go. Anyway, so we'll pull the jug off. I'll show you how to do that. It's really, on these KTMs, it's the, like the easiest rebuild ever. For now, let's pull it off, take a look at what we got underneath this thing. All right, guys, so the first thing we want to do is we want to remove this power valve cover. So this is your power valve. Uh, the only thing you need to unhook here to pull this jug off is just this little thing. You reach your little finger back here, go. Now it won't come off. There we go. Then we can move these four head bolts. Ugh. 10 millimeter socket will do you. So really the only thing you need to do to inspect the piston and rings or to replace them is to pull this jug up. Uh, but what I want to do is pull the head off. You don't have to do this. I want to do this. I want to pull the head off and just and see if I can see any markings on the piston to see what size it is, whether it's oversized. Uh, pistons, when they come new in an engine, they're usually, excuse me, they're usually class A or class 1 meaning brand new piston, it's a particular size from the factory down to the hundredth of, an, uh, of a millimeter. And then what happens is the engine wears in, you go to a class B. What happens when you hone it out for the first time? You might go to a C. When you hone it out again, you might go to a D. Now I don't know if this engine's been honed out or, or what. So I'm gonna pull this off, I'm gonna clean the top of the piston if, if I can and see if we have a uh, an indication of the size piston it is. If you know your engine, you wouldn't need to do this. But I don't know this engine. All right, we see our piston right here. Bring it up to top dead center. And that looks really clean. That's unbelievable. I would have thought this would be a lot older looking. So, a uh, good thing to use to clean the top of this off, if it is, here I could probably just use spit, but a good thing to use, I'll show you, this stuff right here, this stuff is amazing. It'll clean carbon off of things, rust off of things, oxidized aluminum, it's kind of an amazing thing. So what I'm hoping is if I clean the top of this piston off that I'll see an indicator, a number of, of what size piston this is. I don't see one right now, so I might be out of luck, but we'll give it a go. Okay, this is good. 
This is very good. Now, I'm starting to see a stamp on this thing. <laughs> this engine is so easy to move with my fingers. I got it. So I'm going to try to show you. So if you could see that, right kind of halfway underneath that brown um, carbon mark, you see a B stamped in there. That tells us the size of the piston. That's good news. That means the cylinder has not been honed out. Uh, that this would be the second piston size you would normally put in an engine after it's been broken in, so like 50 hours. You usually go from an A to a B or a 1 to a 2. However, um, the piston manufacturer does a vertex is what I'll put in this probably. And they have A, B, C, and D. So 10 millimeter wrench to take these head bolts off. There we go, heads off. I'm gonna put that over to the side. Turn this bad boy back around for you. Look at how tiny it is. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we can take a look at this piston together. It looks really good, actually. I'm surprised. I don't see any deep scoring or anything in it, which is a good sign. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, that looks really good. Uh, it's getting replaced anyway, but I am really happy to see that it's in such good condition. Um, what the heck? Where did it go? Oh, there's really no deep scratches or anything inside of this. It looks pretty good. So this jug looks like it's in good condition. There's really, there's no scratches inside of it. It looks very good. I'm not saying perfect, but it looks really good. You can see some, man, I hesitate to call it scoring, but you can see some rubbing marks where probably the piston rubbed, or excuse me, the ring or maybe uh, rubbed on it. Maybe some sediment got in there from uh, not a well-oiled oil filter. You know, any number of things. You get dirt in into the engine through the oil filter and it can you know, it gets stuck on the ring and it scratches your walls. But this, I can't feel them. I can't feel them at all. So, and I can still see some of the cross hatching from the original uh, honing process. So it looks good. It's a good looking, good looking jug. Better than my 200 over there when I replace its rings. And I'm riding it and it's plenty good for me. So from here, uh, what, what we'll do, so, we're going to replace the piston and the rings just for fun. Uh-oh. Huh. That's interesting. I think this thing's had the bottom end redone before. I see what looks like a hot rod's connecting rod. The connecting rod is this little bit right here. What I see right there, you see that? HR640, is that a hot rod connecting rod? Huh. I don't think that's stock. So that means potentially the bottom end's been redone too if they did the whole um, crankshaft. Huh, that would be cool. That'd be a nice plus. We're still on a group B piston, meaning it hasn't been honed out. Um, anyway, so there you have it. So we'll wait for the uh, the UPS man to bring us a new ring and piston, and go ahead and slap that in. We'll put we'll put it back together. We'll do another compression test, and hopefully the compression test is higher than what was it, 98, 98. <laughs> so what do we find? We we have a jug that's really good. It's in great condition. That's a good thing. We don't want to replace this. It's several hundred dollars. If we want to get it honed, then we got to take it to a machinist. He's got to do his work. It takes like weeks probably. So we have a jug that we could use a, a, a type B piston in it from Vertex. We'll probably go with a Vertex. I like those. And everything seems to be in good working condition. I predict when we put a piston in here, 
Our compression should be around 140, 150, hopefully. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. It's, but anything better than 100 is good for me right now. I've already went ahead and ordered that piston and ring set. Should be here in a couple days. And then you'll join me and we'll put this back together. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. If you hated it, please leave a comment and let me know. If you liked it, leave a comment and let me know. Uh, you don't have to subscribe, but you can. You can if you want to. I appreciate it. I like doing this. I like doing projects. This gives me an excuse to do projects. So please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you don't mind. I would really appreciate it. I'm going to go, but we'll see you guys in the next video. Should be in a couple days. Uh, once we get our ring and piston in, I'll be dying to get it in. So I hope you guys are there with me. All right. Have a good day. Bye.